Hey everyone, if you've been following my channel for a while, you might have noticed I do some common DIY projects, but I don't do weapons builds. No Wolverine claws, splitting blades, crossbows, tasers, nothing like that. My friends James at Hacksmith and Alan at Sufficiently Advanced do that stuff and I love watching them do it. But normally, it's just not my thing. I do sexy, but not deadly. But weapons are a classic engineering problem and often an interesting one. You can't just ignore all the engineering history and knowledge. Also, I don't want anyone saying I'm not up to the job. I've got my pride. I can do weapons almost as well as anyone. I just normally don't. I was thinking of all the DIY ladies on YouTube, almost none of us do weapon spills. What if there's a girl out there who doesn't want to do cute LED wearables or 3D printing shoes? She wants to make deadly weapons just like the guys do. Well, this video is for her. You can look how you want and make what you want. Even if that's murderous tools of assassination. Okay, if we are going to do this, we are going to approach it as a real design problem. Design is dictated by constraints. What you have and what you can do. Here are the specifications for my device. The device has to be legal. In China, we have very strict laws about projectiles. Without license, they are limited to 1.8 joules per square centimeter. That's how much is required for injury to an eye. That's so little force, it would be useless for our purpose. So projectile weapons are out. So are large blades, poison, tasers, and defensive sprays all illegal. The device cannot rely on the user skill or physical attributes. This is me trying to get on an inflatable unicorn. I'm neither strong, well-coordinated, or athletic. This means things like Wolverine claws and martial arts weapons are out. Anyone who saw me coming with those would just throw a chair at me and that would be that. When faced with a faster, stronger, more skilled opponent, what are we left with? Guile and subterfuge. That means the device should be consumable. That's the only way I'm going to get close enough to use it. Hypothetically, I've got one try at assassinating my target. I'm 42 kilos, if I get punched once by grown men, and probably most women, and I'm dead. I've got to completely disable the target so they can retaliate. And since projectile weapons are out, I have to do it from arms reach. In my mind, this rules out pocket flamethrowers and anything with swords or small blades that does a lot of superficial dam damage before they stop anyone. Interesting exercise, right? It may be a bit morbid, but just this once we're going to put that aside and treat it like an honest and very interesting engineering problem. Because it is a cool one and of course we're not going to hurt anyone. So I've spent a few days doing research on Wikipedia and YouTube and I came across this. It's a knife with a CO2 cylinder to inject a huge ball of freezing gas. Now, a knife is out even if they were legal in China, someone would probably just punch me in the nose and take it as soon as I try to use it. And why a small, very skilled person with a knife might be able to do it? But I'm not going to go train knife fighting up in the mountains for a few months for this video. I want a device. But I think maybe I can adapt the idea of the Vav's knife into a more stealthy weapon. First, I have to find a safe and easy way for me to discharge a CO2 cartridge all at once. I don't want to use a regulator or an air reservoir because those will add to the size and weight of the device and also reduce the amount of damage the quickly expensive ball of frozen gas does. 
I don't have a little push button, well fly, the valves knife uses, and I don't know where to get one. So I've bought this pull cord setup from a Life West. Let's test it out. It's a bit too hard to pull to be practical for me and I'm not sure how that would work trying to step with one hand and pull a straight at the right time with the other. Back to the drawing board. I saw this in an online surplus store. It's from Life Wrapped and says it's either pull core or free volt electric to puncture the CO2 cylinder. Free volts would be perfect. Okay, it arrived and I have it all set up to go. But I took a minute to read the documentation that came with it. Long story short, that free vote triggers an explosive charge that punches the CO2. No, 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 no explosives for me. Thank you. <sighs> okay, so James at Hacksmith, Ellen at Sufficient Load Advance, and Michael Rich heard about my explosive CO2 trigger and want to order a bunch from China because they're all nuts. I don't want to send them a duck product if it turns out these things don't actually work, so I'm going to test it. The guys told me not to, but you know, nobody calls me chicken. Let's do this! Don't laugh. There's a time and places for kill clothes. Testing explosive triggers on high pressure cylinder, isn't it? I'm not taking any chance. Okay, see you later. Crackers. Guys, James, Alan, Michael, I hate you so much, but your explosive life graft invasion triggers are in the mail as requested. What you tell customs or any other man in Zeus who come to your doors, it's not my problem. Okay, finally, I've got a proper solenoid valve weighted to handle the pressure directly from the CO2 cylinder. Let's test it out. Damn, got a cup, but it's worth it. Newton's third law is a thing. Who knew? No, I'm not going to edit that out or reshoot it. I screwed a big time and I have to own that. Anyone can edit in post-production to look super competent. Looking at that video, that was dangerous and stupid. And I deserve all the comments that I'm going to get saying so. First, I didn't put the valve in the vise to test it like I did the first two times. Second, as soon as I was done with the dangerous explosive, I took the protective jacket off that would have completely prevent my injury. I was rushing because it was getting late, but that's no excuse. I know better. I've been researching this carefully. Pressure-wise gas is incredibly dangerous, and there I go, getting all comfortable. Dumbass. Okay, well, I simply have to do better. I'm embarrassed, but I think it's more important that you see stuff like this and learn from my mistakes than it is for me to save face and pretend to be more competent than I am. It was stupid. I own that. Say your words in the comment section. I have it coming. I have this high pressure line. It will let me move the well, cylinder, and battery somewhere safer than my chest and also more hidden, maybe on my back. Given the location of the needle, I want it very, very rigid with no possibility of side-to-side -side movement. So this isn't the time for 3D printed parts. 
Shout out to my fourth boy, the old Tony and Jimmy the Rester. Anything you see me do correctly, I got from watching their videos. Anything you see me doing like a dumbass is because I didn't watch closely in love. Most of all, I'm grateful to them for showing me a world past 3D printing and learn to code because not everyone is going to work in an office and I would like to show girls about welding and other skill trades also. One day I'll have the knowledge and equipment to do that. But today we are going to make do with what we've got. Okay, a lot of you in the comment section saying that I should wear gloves for this. No, you will never wear gloves for spinning tools. It will pull your whole hands in. So you can't wear a jacket or wear gloves. I mean, better lose a finger than lose your whole arm. I would still look badass without a finger. Metalwork is all about the order of operations. Of course, I got this wrong, so I'm just going to cut this. You might have noticed my drill vise is always screwed down. That's because my hands aren't really strong. And once it got ripped out of my hand, so now I always bolt it down. I made another mistake, I had to cut it some more, but now I'm ready to go. Check it out, this looks weird, this is the counter board, but it's really cool, now watch. Okay, I don't think I will be taking on any apprentice soon, but not bad for a beginner. Best 
metal world in the world, but it's going to be against my boobs with a dead needle. So why need it to be more rigid than to be beautiful? Um, at least I made it. I'm proud of it. Remember, this is for science. This video is sponsored by Creality 3D, makers of the End of 3 3D printer. Check the description box for more info. Usually I'm not a hot groove person, but the switch could shard and could activate the CO2 cylinder, so I'm just going to put a little bit underneath the switch to protect it. I kept the needle pretty short, but I think it's long enough for the job. I just don't want to take any chances. Now I'm going to mount the other part together. So I stay up late last night because uh, I couldn't sleep. So I got up in the middle of the night and finished the power pack. And I put some paddings around the needle so that the metal wouldn't, you know, touch me directly. And for the power pack, uh, it's pretty safe because you have to add in the air cartridge first. You have to activate like two or three steps to activate it. So you have to pluck it, pluck in the in the power jack and then you have to turn on the switch you hear that that's the solenoid valve okay let's test that out oh mr. watermelon so nice to meet you what what's that you want a hug sure just be careful Fresh one pattern. Want some? 
I figure if you can explore a watermelon, you can explore a chest cavity. <laughs>